Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am your host, Angel Ferguson. For truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always a honor and a pleasure to come in and spend time with you in the Word of God. We love to stay connected with you, our reading as well as our listening audience. And there are countless ways in which you can connect with us. Social media, via Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, iTunes, iHeartRadio, our YouTube channel, as well as our website, www.aFergusonSWRP.SimpleSite.com. And via the website, you have the opportunity to check out our, our ministry, Angel Ferguson's Ministries, our publishing division, Hope and Truth Magazine, our bookstore, Motivation That Inspires, and so much more. And as we are still balancing out our new airtime, We first started out doing a 3 o'clock p.m. live podcast, but I am feeling in my spirit to move it up during the day. And so on yesterday, we came in at 1130, and I think that we're going to settle at doing a 1230 live podcast seven days a week here on our station motivation speaks with angel ferguson on our saturday editions is our book reviews and where we invite guests to come in to discuss their books and to let you know about authors and their upcoming projects on mondays we like to share a lesson from our mentoring program and so what it is that we are looking to do is, is we are just looking to grow as Christ would have us to in the things and the avenues that he has given us. So we thank you for being a part of our show here at The Balance of Life. If you are looking for cleaning services for your home or your business, check out Fran and Ann's Cleaning Services. The owner is Angelina Green. Telephone number is 813-410-7922 or 813-978-1676. The email address is Fran underscore N underscore A-M-S-C-S at Yahoo. Dot com. Contact Fran and Ann's cleaning services today for your business or your residential area. Styled by Lavette, Miss Lavette, specializing in sew ins, quick weaves, relaxers, and more. For an appointment, contact 813. 813- 863-3270, their motto, bringing out your natural beauty within. You can contact and follow Style by Miss Lavette via Instagram and Facebook. The email address is stylebylavette at gmail.com. On Instagram, it's at Miss Lavette and Facebook is styled by Miss Lavette, and you can check out the styles and the different uh, things that she does. She does awesome work. Uh, check her out today, and, and hopefully we have found you a new stylist or perhaps some new ideas. As I was in my study... On last night, I thought of and 
I was in prayer about a few things and and I recall the the scripture over in Daniel the 10th chapter and it was at the 12th verse it says then said he unto me fear not Daniel for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. So as I, I, I found the scripture because it, it fell into my spirit and I wanted to quote it precisely, I, I looked at that and, and then I was intrigued to find out what words were heard. It's so important that we look at the entire scope of why certain words were spoken in the Bible to not start at the middle or at the end, but to go back at the beginning. So I, as I laid down, that was my prayer. Well, what words? It says, from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come out for thy words. So this morning, I did some backtracking. And it takes me back to Daniel, the eighth chapter. And as I begin to read, I can get an understanding of why the angel of the Lord came, as well as why he was held up. And so that is what we're going to share today here on the balance of life. When God knows that we are sincere in our prayers, he will hear us and he will sin deliverance but we must be sincere in our prayers we must not have any hidden agendas and and if you have studied anything about Daniel you know that Daniel was a intercessor he was more than a prophet he could do more than interpret the dreams and have an understanding of them but he was a intercessor And so we're going to share with you why this angel came to say from the first, when you set your heart, when you set your heart, that that's where we have to, that's where we have to get to. And, and, and that is the, the, the main emphasis from the first day that thou set thine heart to understand. We can pray. We can meditate. We can read the word of God. But until we set our heart. On the things of Christ. In, in sincerity. He will not hear us. It starts in the heart. And so as we all have our petitions and we have our prayers and we have our supplications, I encourage you today to make sure that your heart is in the right place, that your intent is in the right place, that you have a full understanding that it's not about you as the individual, but it is about the kingdom of God. It is about him receiving all of the glory. It is about the deliverance of people of this world. 
It is about sharing the gospel, the true gospel until the ends of the earth. Your deliverance is really not about you. It's for those souls that are waiting for you that at that appointed time, God would allow for you to pat to 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 come in contact with certain ones. That's what our deliverance is about. That is what our trials and tribulations are about. That is what our endurance is about. And as I read and I meditate on this passage of scripture, of these chapters, Daniel was an intercessor that he put himself, he didn't separate himself. He didn't say, well, God, I did right and, and, and they did not. But he said, we did not listen to the messengers that you sent among us. To stop transgressing. He said we. Did not listen to your voice of repentance. We. He did not separate himself. And, and as an intercessor. As a leader. As a shepherd. We must move ourselves from the you. And place ourselves in the we. And so, Daniel, the eighth chapter, it is discussing a vision that Daniel had. And we're going to begin at the eighth, uh, eighth chapter in the first verse. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me. Even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first. And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass. When I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the providence of Elam. And I saw in a vision, and I was by the river of Lai. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram, which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand but he did according to his will and became great. And as I was considering, behold, and great he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river and ran unto him in the fury of his power. And I saw him come close unto the ram and he was moved with choler against him and smote the ram and break his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Therefore the he-goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken, for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceedingly great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host 
and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away and the palace of his sanctuary was cast down and an host was even given against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression and it cast down the truth to the ground and it practiced and prospered then i heard one voice i heard one saint speaking and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake how long shall the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot and he said unto me unto two thousand and three hundred days then shall the sanctuary be cleansed so this first portion that i read as we stated in the beginning over in daniel the 10th chapter the the angel of the lord came to daniel and said fear not daniel far for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. So we're just giving a background of what leads Daniel to a period of fasting and praying before God and making intercession on behalf of the people. God had showed him a vision. Now God sent two angels. Daniel had the vision and then which began at Daniel the 8th chapter the 1st through the 14th verse. And then in the 15th verse in that very same chapter, God sends the angel Gabriel to explain the vision. This is going to lead us into Daniel's prayer. And we are still in Daniel the eighth chapter and now we are at the 15th verse. And, and, and I think it's so important that you lay a foundation and give background as to what happened before, what happened during and what happened after. So here, the angel of the Lord is going to explain this vision and why is it taking place. And if you would allow the Holy Spirit to reveal unto you, get into a place in, in Christ in sincerity, that he will reveal the scriptures unto you. This is being taken place because the nation that God has given his, called as his own, had transgressed. They were a disobedient, stiff-necked people. They would not adhere and abide to the laws and the commandments of God. And prophet after prophet would come and warn them time and time and time again to turn from their wicked ways, put away the strange gods from among you and serve the true and living God. And there were periods of time that they would do it for so long, but they would revert back or they would do it partially. But God does not take a partiality. It's all or nothing. And we have to get into a place in him that we surrender with our whole heart. And on yesterday, as we ministered the word of God, that the word of God is alive in me, then we should be so very careful of how we move and operate in our daily lives, that we get an understanding that, yes, our body is, is, is to be presented as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service for all that he does for us. And so God will send warnings unto us 
to get it right, to, to get our house in order. And, and, and that meaning of getting our house in order is your temple, your body, your soul. Get it right. And so I come by to tell you through the anointing that you must set your house in order, meaning your soul. Get get lined up with the word of God. It's not enough that we stop doing things of the world and the natural, but we must turn from those things within our hearts. Because if we only do those things in the natural and we stop going to uh, things that are connected to the world, such as uh, nightclubs and, and drinking alcohol to become intoxicated and, and fornication and and wickedness and covetousness, if we only do it to stop in the natural, it profits us nothing because you have not done it in your heart unto the righteousness of God. I choose not to do those things because I know that it will defile this temple which houses the true and living God. His word abides in me. And this is where God was trying to get his people. So as we are looking at Daniel, the eighth chapter and, and the 15th verse is the explanation of the vision that Daniel had seen. And it says, and it came to pass when I, even Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning, then behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of you, I, and called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Now, as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground, but he touched me and set me upright. And he said, Meda and Persia, and the rough goat is the king of Grecia, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, Four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nations, but not in his power. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors, transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce conscience and understanding darkness shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Warning comes before destruction. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand and he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many he shall also stand up against the prince of princes but he shall be broken without hand and the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true wherefore shut thou up the vision for it shall be for many days and i daniel fainted and was sick certain days Afterward, I rose up and did the king's business, and I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. If you are just joining us here at the Balance of Life, we are 
talking about God will hear our prayer when it's done in sincerity. God sent two of his angels to Daniel. And our main area is coming from Daniel, the 10th chapter and the 12th verse. Then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard and I am come for thy words. And so we were giving a background as to why this second angel was sent unto Daniel. We just, we, we, we went over in the eighth chapter of Daniel, the vision that he had. God sent the first angel, which is Gabriel, to give an interpretation. And now we're going to go over to the ninth chapter concerning Daniel's prayer for the people. And as we mentioned, Daniel, he, he knew because he was a man of God and he was a part of this people. And, and although he had been carried away and no longer in his homeland, he, he still connected and served the true and living God. And no matter where we are in life, when God becomes a part of us, when we ex accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, no matter where we are, no matter what you go through, he is still Lord and Savior. And we should not deter from that. He is Lord and Savior. He is God of our life. He is guidance of our life through the good and the bad times. Over in the ninth chapter of Daniel, it says, In the first year of Darius, the son of Aharius, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. This prophecy that we read about, this vision in the eighth chapter, had been sent through various prophets. Daniel understood the word that came forth through the prophet of Jeremiah. He understood that. And it says, and I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Once again, remember, Daniel had been carried away. He was not in Jerusalem. At a young age, Daniel had been carried away to another land to serve another king. But he still identified and he held God as the true and living God. He did not serve another God. Daniel was carried away to Babylon. 
He was born in Jerusalem. He was from Jerusalem, but he was carried to another place to serve that king. But God was the God of his life. God was his king. And so as he received this vision and it was explained unto him and he understand what had been said by the prophet Jeremiah, he went into a prayer of intercession for his people. He didn't separate himself. And I, and I, I repeat that because I think it's so important. It is so important that we learn the importance of corporate prayer and intercessory prayer to really intercede. We are a people. It's not I. It's we. It's we because we have a responsibility to share the true gospel, to bring others into the knowledge of Christ. It is we. In ministry, it is we. It's not they. It's not you. It's not even I. It's we. That we are on one accord. That the spirit of division does not reign and sit amongst us. It is we. Verse 7 says, O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that, that are far off throughout all the countries whither thou hast driven them because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee they were scattered and that was a part of the prophecy god continually con to warn his people that i will scatter you i brought you into this place this promised land and you have transgressed against me and, and you have forgotten where I have bought you from, but I will scatter you until the ends of the earth. Verse eight says, O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face to our kings, to our princes and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. He is a merciful and a just God, but yet we will continue to sin against him by not turning unto him with our whole heart, by not being obedient to the instructions that he has given us. When we don't follow instructions, that is disobedience. Remember, Isaiah 55 says, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. Meaning it's not the way we want to do it. We have we have an idea. And basically, a lot of our ideas are because of the way we saw somebody else do something. But that's not God's way that worked for them. If we could get ourselves out of the mode of tradition, man's tradition, and follow the path and righteousness of God, he said he'll direct us. He will, he'll, he'll direct our paths. He knows our very beginning and our very end, and he knows what, what's going to go on in the middle. He knows all about us. 
verse 11, verse 10 says, neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord, our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by the servants, the prophets, not one time. And I, and I'll keep going back to this. Not one time did Daniel said, I wasn't there. I was, I was, I was carried away over here as a captive. That's he, he didn't say that. Hey, that was them. They were disobedient. He said, we, He didn't point the, the, his finger at, at the people and say, look what you have done. But it grieved his spirit and he interceded on behalf of his nation. He understood the importance of God calling this nation his people. I don't know... If you, if, if that has resonated in your spirit, but to be called beloved by God, to be called the sons and daughters of God is an honor. To be called and recognized as his elect, not man's, but his, is nothing we should take lightly. He says, I have called you with the holy call. I have chosen you. I have ordained you. The one who created you. The one who placed you in your mother's womb. I, meaning God. But yet we follow the paths in the tradition of man. Verse 11 says, Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against thee. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil for under the whole heaven have not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil is come upon us, yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. So even though they were scattered and some of the things that God had been warning them about was, was happening, they still did not repent and turn back to God with their whole heart. They still did not come unto truth. And that happens so often in our lives today. We yet will not turn to God with our, our whole heart. We will yet go into a path of destruction. We, but yet we say, God, what's going on? And hear my cry. But he's saying, you, you've yet to turn to me with your whole heart. You yet continue to transgress. You yet continue not to follow the instructions that I have given you through my servants. You will yet not spend time with me in the word of God. You will yet not come and, and, and fellowship and you won't come so that we may reason together. You won't get into your word. He's telling us. but we turn a deaf ear and he's saying, I want to spend time with you. Turn down your plate. And I'm trying to teach you what it really means to fast. It's to, to break strongholds and destroy yokes. That is the fast that he's called. He's saying, be careful how you handle my temple because I abide there. 
and I need it purged and clean. But you want me to abide with filth and clutter and residue. And I can't abide in those places. And so today, I think it's it's it, that that word that will continue to to go forth and to pour out. It is a time that we 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 get real with our relationship with Christ. As you have accepted Him as your Lord and Savior, as we discussed on yesterday. As you have accepted him, as you have believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth, he is now dwelling in you and and he is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was God. He sent the living word in the form of Jesus Christ. And as we accept him, that word now abides in us. He said, if ye abide in me and I abide in you. If my word abide in you. Meaning, sings the blessings. We must also tell about the consequences of disobedience. It is time for us to move from a selfishness of I and get into the role of we because we've all sinned and come short. And so as we are looking at the we, examine your relationship with Christ. Where am I in him? Am I doing the things that he would call that he has called me to do? For this world that he created. That's how we step into the we. Are we doing the things that we are called to do? And we're going to cut it off right there. And and we definitely will pick it up again on tomorrow. God will hear your prayers If they are in sincerity, as he did with Daniel, we love you here at the balance of life. We look forward to sharing with you.